Good morning. I had to drop off Ben, so I thought I'd stop by and say hello. Miriam, you've been crying. What's wrong? Here, why don't we talk about it? Miriam, I want to help you. Nobody can help. I just wish I was dead. Why didn't you let me die? Oh, Miriam, no. <laughs> My life isn't even worth living. I'm just nothing but a failure. That's not true. Yes, it is. Daddy and you and everybody would just be a lot better off if I were just dead. <laughs> Somebody wants to kill me. Miriam. We love you. You've been through so much. <laughs> Come on, don't give up now. Miriam, there's hope. <laughs> Detective Blasky? Yes, ma'am? Have you found him yet? Who? My son, Jimmy Redland. Uh, this is my wife, Carla Redland. My... Oh, Mr. Redland, uh, please, have a seat. Uh, you weren't at the station last night? <clears throat> well, we searched all night, but nothing. You've got to find him. Carla, baby, they're doing the best they can. You've checked with all of his friends? Yes, I've checked everything, and, and no one has seen him since yesterday afternoon at school. This isn't like him. I know he would have come home. Unless something's happened. Mrs. Redland, he did run away voluntarily. But he's only a baby. He doesn't know anything about being on his own like this. Uh, Detective, what do we do next? Keep searching the immediate premises. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, keep someone available for phone calls. I've already put out a... I expanded our search to Tri-State. Tri-State? I've alerted the surrounding states to be on the lookout for him. You don't think he could be in another state? It's a precautionary measure. Of course, there's always a possibility that he hitched a ride and went oh, across... Oh, no, the... God. Gee. Hey, baby, come on. I've come already on. put out a teletype and notified NCIC in Washington. Plus, the boy's picture is going to be in the afternoon newspaper, local TV news, radio... Hey, see, baby, we should be hearing something soon. Come I'll on. let you know something as soon oh, as I... excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt. Hey, James, Commissioner hi. Prescott. How are you doing? Hi, Carla. I heard about Jimmy on the radio. Your mom told me you were here, and I just want to do what I can to help. Hey, well, thanks for coming down. And Appreciate don't it. worry about your job. No job is as important as a son. Now, Detective, how can I help? Hi. Peter. Another two applications. Did you come alone? I usually do. Well, I thought maybe Gil was going to surprise me. I haven't even seen him. Any more permits ready? I should have somebody this afternoon. You could tell Gil. Why? It's my responsibility. But he might want to come with you. I'll see you. Peter, you don't have to leave so soon. We hardly ever get a chance to visit anymore. Well, it's not my fault. Well, how's work going? Fine. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm working full time this summer. Yeah, I bet Gil keeps you as busy as he is. Uh, you'll have to ask him. I guess he's been busy. I haven't heard from him since last week. Really? Yeah, we went to dinner at the Rustic Cove over the water. And then we went for this romantic walk on the beach. Mm, how nice. Has Gil said anything to you about me or our date? Like what? Oh, you know, whether or not he enjoyed it or when he's going to ask me out again. Uh, not that I can recall. Mm -mm. Are you going to be seeing him later today? Maybe. Uh, maybe not. I don't want you to take this the wrong way. But if he says anything about me, would you tell me? Vicki, I don't want to get involved in your affairs. You'd only be relating information. Okay, better yet. Just tell him you saw me and that I asked about him. Sure. If I don't forget. Peter, it's important. I'll see you later. Tell him to call me. Yeah, Redland needs all the help we can muster, okay, Hank? And if Gil comes in, have him call me. All right. Thank you. Your prodigal son didn't show up for work? No. Prodigal son didn't show home last night either. That's not unusual, is it? Well, even if he stays out all night, he usually comes home early to change clothes. He won't stay gone long. He's got it made. Uh, I shouldn't have yelled at him like that yesterday. Don't blame yourself. Gil always takes the easy way out. I could have been more understanding. If you ask me, you've been too understanding already. Well, you know, all in all, what? 
Gil has always been a pretty good kid. And he still is. A kid. You've spoiled him since he was born. Probably had more toys than any kid on the block, and he still does. Except now they're bigger and more expensive. Well, wait a minute. He spends his own money for his cars and motorcycles. That's another thing. He lives at home, has no responsibility, and earns full salary for a job he takes only half seriously. Well, he's doing all right. Making excuses for him again. Well, he's not as irresponsible as you're implying. Gil has some good qualities. After all, he's your son. Thank you. But things have come too easily and too fast for him. He's the boss over men twice his age. Well, this is all going to be his someday. He's got to learn how to run it. If he doesn't steal it first. Ah, come on. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Well, at least he had the courage to admit what he did and keep Kathy from being fired. Like I said, Gil has some good qualities, like his father. Thank you. Oh, hi, hon. These are ready for your signature. Oh, thank you. Have you seen Gil? I've called all the usual spots. He's probably sleeping one off somewhere. I'm getting worried about him. Dad, he could have been in an accident. Nah. Thank you. I'll get these out today. OK. What's going to happen to him, Dad? Three speeding tickets in one month, and then stealing to pay for them. It's getting worse. Yeah. I know, honey. I know. Well, you seem to be feeling better. <laughs> Daddy. And don't you look nice, not at all like that young lady that was admitted here two months ago. <laughs> mm. Well, I'm not like her. Mm -hmm. In fact, Dr. Thompson said that he plans on releasing me soon. That's my girl, and Nancy will be pleased, too. I'm going to redecorate your room. Daddy, see, I'm not going to be moving back to the house, though. I'm going to be there, too, and the three of us can... You moved... Back in with Nancy? Well, it seemed a sensible thing to do since I was spending so much time visiting you, and uh, Nancy was lonely. So you wouldn't move back for me, but you would for her. Now, Miriam, it wasn't anything at all like that. Well, it doesn't matter. Dr. Thompson doesn't want me to move back home anyway. Yes, I know, and I don't think he knows what's best. Nancy and I can take care of you. No, you see, Daddy, it's Nancy that caused a lot of my problems. Miriam, Nancy tried to help you all she could. Now, I just don't think it's fair that you try and blame uh, your problems on her. Well, I accept responsibility for what I allowed her to do. And my dependence on Nancy and on you was my fault. Mim, if it's independence you need, I'll start looking for an apartment for you, perhaps even a condominium. No, that, that really won't be necessary. Oh, a vacation. You want to get away for a while? That's splendid. Now, you see, when I leave this hospital, I want to walk out on my own two feet. I want to be independent of you. What? Mim, you're just not making any sense. Well, I reached a decision this morning, Daddy, and I realized and decided that for the first time in my life, I'm going to be independent of you. Mim, have you forgotten that your inability to cope uh, produced your dependence on drugs? Well, I didn't say it was going to be easy, but I know that this is the way it's got to be. But where are you going to live? How are you going to support yourself? You couldn't even handle the job as my secretary. I know, but this time it's going to be different. <sighs> Mim, I thought you were getting better, and now I see you're thinking as irrationally as ever. Unless this is someone else's idea. No, it was my decision, and I'll live with it. The question is, how? I know what I'm doing, Father. Ma'am, I just don't think so. And I'm very concerned about you. And I hope that you will change your mind. Well, you see, I have changed my mind. And the next step, I'm going to change my life.
Russ. The townhouse now belongs to you. Compliments of me. Make yourself at home. I'll be in touch soon. Vince. Here. Becky, listen, I want your back. You gotta listen to me, Russ, okay, please? I cannot listen what, to you. What, are you afraid I... that I'm gonna reach you, aren't you? No. That, that maybe you're seeing something, seeing Russ, me bring back something that was Russ, gone? Russ, I don't well, love you anymore. Gone, back. I don't know if I ever did. It's not true. I, I don't believe that. I know you don't believe it or you wouldn't be here. But not believing it doesn't make it any less true. This is all just a flash in the pan. You're a rage. Next month, it'll be another rage. Russ, I've got a show to Beck, do. Beck, you left something more than just your past in Kingsley. You left your future there, too. Russ, my future is here. Oh, come on, wake up. This is, this is, this is not real, man. It's a dream. It's not a dream. When I was living in that sewer with you and Kingsley, then this was a dream. When I was fending off guys like Phil Hayes in the tiger's paw, then this was a dream. But right now, there are 12,000 people out there, real people waiting for me. And I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to sing my dream right into being. Russ, you couldn't understand it before. Why should I think you can understand it now? Why'd you leave? Yeah. Hey, you're right. I can't compete with any of this. I don't have anything that I can give you. Just myself. A minute ago, I was a flash in the pan, and now, now you're the poor, helpless lover. You always assumed that it was just all the fame and glory for me, didn't you? You think that I'm just here for the flash? Well, that's don't any, you? any girl's Cinderella story. Don't, you can't deny that. Yes, I am denying it. Because all my life, Ross, I've had to keep everything inside. I've always had Not to hide. For me, you have Yes, I've had to hide more from you than anybody else. But out there, out there, Ross, all those feelings, the, the happiness, the, the, the sadness, it can all come out. All the feelings that I had to keep inside because you just didn't want to hear it. You what? Me! When you build a wall around something to protect it, Russ, it just dies of loneliness. But that's what I was there for, Beck. You were there for you. As far as my loneliness is concerned, you couldn't even... Well, maybe me. you wouldn't let me, huh? I, I tried. Russ, there is something inside of you me that I just have to... Double-talking con artist and a handful of uh, fans and then, what, all of a sudden you're some kind of fulfilled woman? Is that what you're trying to tell me? At least now I have somebody who'll listen to me. Beck, I, I live to listen oh, to you. Off it. He went from Lori to me to now Sheila. The only thing you know how to listen to is your instincts. I left Lori because you were there. I found Sheila because you were gone. Look, what it takes to fulfill me, you don't have. <laughs> IQ, we're ready. Break a leg, Angel. <laughs> Milk this night for all it's worth. New York City, please welcome Becky Hewitt. Be here when you come home, babe. Promise. We traced the flowers to a grocery chain, which has three stores in the area. They came from a grocery store? Uh, each store has a nice floral department. Does anyone remember selling an arrangement to a woman matching Nancy's description? About three dozen women. It seems that it's the hottest item for attractive blondes. I see. And we didn't get any fingerprints from the flowers, either. Do you have any evidence? Just circumstantial. But it all points to Nancy Lawson, although none of it's conclusive. Nancy always stays one step ahead. Uh, she'll make a mistake sooner or later. You don't think she'll try anything again, do you? I mean, if Miriam's memory returns, Nancy will be in serious trouble, and she knows it. I don't think she's going to try anything. Not after my visit with her yesterday. One thing I have learned from Nancy is to expect the unexpected. Well, she seemed pretty shaken, especially when I told her I was going to prove she sent the flowers. I'd still feel a lot better knowing a uniformed officer is posted outside Miriam's room. <sighs> Only until this afternoon. I'm, I'm sorry, but we just can't afford the manpower any longer. Yeah. Well, 
I'll alert the staff to keep a close watch on her. Good idea. And I don't think you're going to have any more trouble. But if you do, call me immediately. I will. Thank you. Oh, um, one more thing. Uh, you're familiar with the Jimmy Redland case? Yes. I'm a friend of the family. Has there been any sign of him? <sighs> Just seems to have disappeared. Jimmy's always been such a good boy. Now, those are the type of runaways you have to watch out for, though. They don't know trouble when they see it. Oh, I pray he'll be found soon. Well, the sooner the better. I wouldn't tell his parents this, but uh, with each hour that passes, there's more reason to worry. Yes, thank you, Reverend Crawford. The Lord knows we've been praying for Jimmy, but we thank you for your prayers, too. We'll be here. <laughs> He's been gone almost 24 hours, Mama. I don't know what possessed that boy to run away like this. And why would he steal money from his teacher? It just doesn't make sense. Not Jimmy. I've left money laying around many times. I don't care what he's done, just as long as I get him back safe and sound. You read about these children in the newspapers all the time. Any sign of them? No. Check the Y, the playgrounds again, even the church. Reverend Crawford said he saw you. Well, maybe we should call the station no, again. No. They said they would call us. We just checked back by to see if you heard anything yet. This is a big city when you're looking for a small boy, and we got a lot of miles to cover before sundown. I want to go with you. Carla, I want you to stay here with Mommy. But I feel so useless waiting, not knowing whether Jimmy's dead or alive. Listen. Lord, I'll only stay a minute, but I heard about Jimmy, and I thought you could use this more than Ben and me. Thank you, but you shouldn't have. Oh, Lord, child. <laughs> Food is the last thing on our minds right now, though. I thought so, but you still have to eat. Well, thank you very much. I wonder if Jimmy's hungry. Do you have any idea where he could be? No, none whatsoever. But we're not giving up until we find him. Hey, hey. Jason, hey, what is this? Well, I said we wanted to help. My foreman, Dom. Hey. How are you? Mel? Hi. Bill? Hey. Bill? Bill? Hey. We're ready to start the search as soon as we know what he looks like. Lori. Hi, I, I wanted to help, too, so I brought some stew over. He was Riff. wearing blue jeans, red shirt, and tennis shoes. Yeah. Here's a picture of him. Oh, he's a fine-looking little fellow. Yeah. Hey, thanks. Uh, I really don't know what to say about this, guys. Well, as little as possible. We got a boy to find. Oh, God bless you all. Is there a patient under that paper? <laughs> Terry, thank you for coming. Well, I was going to see you before I left anyway. It's been one of those days. <laughs> Well, mine started on a bad note, too, but Lori was really an encouragement. She told me. I'm glad you're feeling better. Now, after she left, I did a lot of thinking. Anna made some decisions about my future. Oh, you sound excited. And a little nervous. But I am starting to feel a little better about myself already. Good. Do your uh, decisions have anything to do with wanting to see me today? Well, as you probably know, Dr. Thompson, thinking about releasing me soon. I knew he was thinking about it. So I was wondering if you wouldn't mind helping me to find a place to live? I'd be delighted. Oh, I was so afraid you were going to move back with Nancy. No, uh, I know what she's done. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's not your fault. It's just ironic that I'm the one that didn't know who my friends and my enemies were. I'm glad you asked for my help. Does your father know you're not moving back to the house? Well, I told him this afternoon, and. He thinks I'm crazy. What he thinks isn't important. How you feel about it is. Well, see, I've always depended on Daddy ever since I can remember, even when I was married. But I'm not a kid anymore, so I guess it's time I just stop playing the spoiled little rich girl and find out who I really am. And maybe I can learn to like myself. You're on the right track. Well, when I get a little stronger, I'm going to be needing to find a job, too. I have a little money in my account, but it's not going to last long. Don't you worry about a thing. I'm sure the Lord has the perfect place in mind. Charles, where have you been? Driving around thinking. Well, I was worried about you. Well, I'm all right. You don't look well. Can I get you a drink? No, I don't want one. Well, you know, you need to relax. You remember what the doctor said about taking it easy. Now, how am I going to do that with all the problems I have to contend with? 
Did you talk with Detective Lasky? Nancy, I just told you I had a lot of other things on my mind. Yeah, but you said you were going to set him straight about my innocence. Nancy, just please be quiet and leave me alone. What is it? Is it Miriam? And you. Me? Well, you can't believe anything she says. I mean, she's still sick. Well, she seemed to be speaking very clearly to me. Yeah, but Charles, you never know Nancy, what Nancy, my daughter is leaving the hospital, but she's not going to come here to live. Is that all? She is shutting me out of her life, and you're at fault. Uh oh You have driven my daughter away from me. 